Okay, well, so I'm uh, really excited to do this uh, uh, webcast. It's my first uh, webcast on YouTube, so I'm uh, really thrilled about this. So uh, a few words about me. Uh, I'm a senior specialist solution architect. So basically I help customers to understand our technology. Uh, I'm uh, quite focused on, uh, I'm focused on business automation products. So, um, and I follow customer uh, doing POC, uh, helping uh, uh, to start a new pilot of the product. So um, I have uh, I like to do this job because I can put the, my hands on the product and see uh, the day by day uh, challenges that come from customers. So. Uh, I'm uh, in this uh, position where I'm not in, in services, but I see all the often uh, I can put hands on the product and see the challenge that comes from the real world. So uh, today I pick uh, this uh, um, um, this topic that is a task optimization because I had um, a, had a chance a uh, few uh, few months ago, maybe one year, uh, to uh, face this problem because a customer asked me to uh, to implement this uh, this problem, and uh, I I learned many things from uh, from, from this uh, chance from this P, uh, proof of concept. So uh, I'm uh, happy to share this knowledge with you. I uh, hope that uh, uh, it's uh, it requires a bit of knowledge of uh, uh, of the planner. So if you are the first, um, uh, maybe you, you will get a bit uh, um, uh, uh, some difficulties. But no problem. I will try to make it uh, as uh, as easy as possible, and maybe some just details will be more 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 deep and will require uh, deeper knowledge. Anyway, so let's uh, start with uh, the topic. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, as I said, uh, uh, tasks are everywhere, uh, are a common organization problem. So people uh, need to distribute the task among people, among uh, machines. And there are uh, different kinds of uh, tasks. So um, let's say white collar task, uh, people that has to fill in document, people that has to uh, do a, a call, that uh, have to send a, um, a, a mail, uh, every, any kind of, uh, of task. Uh, or uh, can be blue collar uh, task. For example, you, you have to, um, to load uh, a, a truck with uh, with some goods and, and things like that. Um, so uh, the challenger. Uh, so my customer was a, a, a big retail group, uh, omni-channel, omni-local, uh, multi-local, multi-format. Uh, they have uh, uh, more than twelve thousand uh, stores uh, across the world. So uh, for sure, you know it. Um, they have a uh, thousand of employees, and so um, they, they have uh, this uh, interesting problem. So uh, the challenge was uh, the final goal is to optimize the allocation of tasks for employees in their stores. So basically, on on daily basis, because and this is a challenge every day because um, uh, uh, each day is. Uh, can uh, each day can change the the, the actual people in the store. Uh, they can, people can be uh, on vacation. That there are shifts among people, uh, and there are even uh, uh, employees that move from one store to another store. So uh, every day you have to do this task allocation. It's it's never it's never the same. Even because um, some days you you have some activity to do, and some other days you have to other other things to do that are not always the same. So you, you have to do this task allocation that is always different. It's uh, uh, and uh, with dif for different people every day. Um, people need to have uh, the right skill. There are people in the store that are more that they are uh, splitted, for example, for kind of goods. Um, people that stay, for example, they handle the meat, for example, or the people that uh, um, uh, are dedicated to the, the cleaning session of the of the store, uh, and so forth, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, 
I see that. Oh, okay. Uh, I've seen that my screen was disappearing. Uh, so now it's good. Uh, other things. Um, uh, so people have different kind of, uh, of skill. Uh, some task has to finish in a, in a, at a given time. So, uh, for example, uh, people start working uh, early in the morning. Then at a certain point, uh, uh, the store open to, to, um, to have customer inside. Uh, so they, they have to do some kind of task before the, uh, the store opening. And so you have this, uh, let's say, milestone that uh, you have to accomplish the task uh, in, a, in a certain period. And, and there are even, uh, um, so tasks can have a different, different duration. A, a task can be shared among different employees. Um, uh, each task has a, a maximum number of employees that can, can perform the, the, the task. Uh, all employee, uh, all employee have a meeting once a day, uh, before again before the the, the store opening, and uh, uh, task cannot overlap the, the meeting. They 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 they, uh, they have to be sure that they don't assign a task that overlap the meeting, because uh, everything should be uh, completed before the meeting, and anything can be left in the middle between uh, before the meeting and the, and the end of the meeting. So you cannot. Uh, uh, put in pause a, a task and continue after the meeting. So you, you have to do everything or before or after the meeting. So this is another another requirement. So um, first tip for you, when you have a problem, the first thing to do, uh, an optoplanner problem, uh, look at examples. This is sim seems a pretty obvious, uh, uh, obvious thing, but uh, I've noticed that uh, many customers that are even uh, that started working with OptoPlanner and uh, with the product or with our product, uh, they um, uh, haven't uh, uh, looked at, at the example. The example are really useful because they give, uh, um, uh, um, they, they are, uh, they, they uh, solve a set of problems that can be really um, near to your specific problem. So uh, let's run uh, the example together. Uh, okay. So this this is uh, the uh, the uh, an application. Uh, it's a a, a client side application uh, that uh, that contains a set of example of of Auto Planner. Today we have uh, a much uh, nicer example like the vehicle routing that was presented yesterday. We uh, we have the employee rostering that is a web UI, is a much more fancy UI. So, so obviously, if you look for uh, um, um, for those kind of problems, the, 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 that example are are much e easier to, to see uh, and even fancier to, to, to see. But uh, uh, this old, uh, let's say old, uh, uh, examples set is a uh, is a good set of examples that you don't you haven't to forget. So here you have a, a really nice uh, bunch of, of examples. For example, you have uh, the course uh, timetable. You have the nurse uh, rostering, uh, the project job scheduling. So a lot of uh, a lot of interesting uh, uh, example. And uh, I'm uh, I was really lucky because I found my task assignment here. That is uh, uh, that is here. It's uh, the problem that I have to solve. So, I thought uh, I thought when I started my POC, I thought, okay, my job is done. I have the example uh, all done. Uh, let's uh, uh, let's get, get, uh, let's rela relax. Uh, okay, let, let's see uh, the example how it works. The, the example is pretty nice because you have uh, uh, here a set of people. Uh, Amy, Beth, and so on. And uh, uh, for uh, each people, you have uh, a specific uh, skill. So, and this is uh, exactly what my customer was asking. So, uh, the skill assignment. Um, and and then you, uh, down, you have a, a set of uh, um, of uh, tasks that uh, has to be assigned to to the people. And uh, if you look at the task, the task have a, a priority. This is nice again. 
uh, the, the skills that uh, required the, that task, and uh, even uh, the customer affinity. So this means that if you ask the affinity, customer affinity is even a common request. So for example, um, uh, if a, 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 um, a person in the staff started working with a customer, it's likely that uh, that customer when come back, uh, he want to uh, deal with the same uh, person in the staff. This is even of a, co a common request when you have to uh, schedule uh, uh, the, um, uh, the customer call from a call center. You want to give that, this experience to, the, to your end, end user that they found the same, uh, the same person at the phone. Uh, so, pretty sophisticated example. It works. This, this is great because it finally works. Uh, so, definitively works. So, um, it's able to assign the task to, to the people uh, and to, uh, um, to follow the, the requirement. So, the um, uh, most uh, uh, high uh, priority uh, tasks are uh, before the, the less uh, priority. And you see that th this person here has no task because there are no tasks for, 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 for his skill. So uh, uh, OctaPlanner correctly hasn't assigned any task to, to Dan because Dan, uh, Dan uh, is lucky <laughs> because uh, has a, a day off today uh, because there are no tasks that require uh, the skill that he has. Okay, so far so good. Um, let's uh, uh, go back on the presentation. And uh, uh, so let's understand uh, a, a bit more the problem. So uh, since uh, I understood that uh, uh, unfortunately my problem wasn't 100% covered uh, by the, the, the example provided by OptaPlanner, uh, I decided, okay, I have, uh, I, I'm in the position that I have to study uh, a bit more the, the, the example uh, in, because I have, uh, I'm to, uh, I have to change it. I have to change the logic. So how to change the logic? Obviously, you can change something when you understand how it works. So let's understand how uh, task, task assignment works. So first of all, uh, uh, the first question that uh, uh, you face when, when you have to model uh, a, a task, uh, uh, sorry, when you have to model a, a problem in, in OptaPlanner uh, is uh, uh, which is my planning entity. So we have two entity here, we have a task and we have an employee. So uh, for, uh, especially for the, uh, for the new buy, uh, the question is, I have to assign an employee to a task or I have to assign a task to an employee? Um, the answer, uh, is, so before having the answer, you have to answer to this question. The question is, uh, which is uh, the limited resource here? And the limited resource here is the employee. Why? Uh, because if you think, uh, that uh, you have uh, um, uh, you have no limit uh, you have no limit uh, no limits uh, on the number of employee in your store you have uh, no problem of uh, of op optimization at all because you can assign uh, one task to one employee and that's all you you have finished your job but since you have many tasks and few employee what you have to do you have to assign uh, a task to uh, employee so. Uh, our planning entity is the task and our planning variable is the employee. So remember the limited resources, the limited resource is uh, the, uh, the planning variable. Okay, first tip for us. Uh, second tip for you, uh, try to visualize the problem. Okay, so uh, first thing that you can think, okay, uh, task assignment, it's uh, an optimization problem like others. So why it's special? Why uh, I have to, to deal with the, the, why I cannot manage like an employee rostering? I have the employee rostering example. Let's use the employee rostering example. Well, it's not like that. So the, 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 the task assignment, uh, uh, as a, is a special case um, where the the sequence matter, okay? The sequence matters for 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 task assignment. Um, so, for example, if you uh, in an employee rostering you uh, switch a, in a uh, an employee from uh, one shift to another shift, 
the other uh, shifts are untouched. They don't don't change anything. Everything is is fine. Um, but uh, what happens if you move a task from uh, one employee to another employee? So look here at the uh, look here at the uh, animation that uh, I'm going to do now. Here, task one disappear. I go here. And you see that uh, the task two and three are moved up. Uh, so let's let's do it again. One disappear, I go at the end, and two and three move uh, move up. So uh, what does it mean? But, well, this, this is pretty important. This seems uh, uh, a pretty easy thing, but it's important because basically when you change the queue of task. Uh, the starting time of the other task in the in the queue change, and uh, um, obviously you have this uh, uh, effect that uh, uh, is a sort of uh, uh, reaction chain that that, um, that you have in, in your model. So exactly the chain, the, the, the solution of this model is a, exactly a chain. So the, the, the difference between uh, an employee rostering and uh, a task assignment is the task assignment is a, a chained problem. Uh, another chained problem that you uh, might uh, encounter uh, that is uh, really popular is the vehicle routing. Vehicle routing, again, is a chained problem because uh, what you have is uh, you have uh, a first stop, then you have a second stop, and you have a third stop. And if you decide to move away one stop from your from your route, the, all the other stop uh, change in, a, in a, because I can arrive before to to the all other stop in the in the sequence. So so far so good. Uh, let's understand a bit more. So. Um, so the peculiarities uh, of uh, the chain of the problem is that um, uh, the planning variable is not anymore just uh, the, uh, the limited resources here, the, the employee, but the planning variable can point to another task. So the planning variable can be another entity, another planning entity, or can be uh, the limited resource here, the, empl uh, the employee. Uh, and uh, by the way, this this is called anchor. So th this is the anchor of our chain. Um, another another concept that I want to introduce is is uh, uh, the anchor shadow variable. So basically, since uh, it's really common that when you evaluate your model, you need to know which is the anchor. Uh, so for example, which is the uh, employee that is assigned to task seven here. Uh, you have this um, uh, shortcut that go from task seven directly to uh, to the um, uh, to the employee to the empl to the assigned employee, and uh, it's a shadow variable because uh, it um, it's the shadow of the main variable. The main variable is the planning variable. So basically, it's a variable that is computed based on the value of the uh, of the planning variable. Okay, so uh, finally, we have the, our class diagram. Um, we can uh, um, a bit, uh, do a bit of consideration about the class diagram. So uh, my planning entity uh, is the task and uh, the planning entity has a, a planning variable that instead of pointing directly to the employee, it points to a, a, a parent uh, a parent class that uh, the, this parent class is called a task or employee and uh, basically it's the parent class of both of task and employee so the, this is the trick how I can use basically uh, this uh, um, here I have a, a reference to something that can be a previous task or a previous employee uh, I have uh, even other. Uh, uh, I have the shadow variable that uh, I mentioned. It, um, I mentioned before that is a computed a, a computed uh, variable, and I have another shadow variable here that is the inverse relationship. So I have a previous task, but I also have uh, the next task in the in this other di direction. Okay. 
So let's uh, learn the the uh, the chain principles because chain chain have uh, quite tough principles that you have to follow. So a chain can be uh, uh, like like this one. So an entity that is uh, linked to another entity and finally go into an anchor. Uh, you can have an anchor alone without any entities uh, attached to it, uh, uh, and that's it. Uh, so you cannot have entity without an anchor. Uh, you cannot have uh, um, uh, entity that uh, are linked by two other entity. So you cannot have a chain with a branch. Um, and, uh, and you cannot have uh, a loop. So you cannot have a loop of entities. This is really important. OK. Um, so this is important. And now I have my problem. So uh, my POC start here, let's say. So I have this problem. Uh, the customer want to share tasks among people. And so I would like to have a task here in the middle that can be shared among uh, uh, one person and another person. And But uh, I have a problem that uh, I cannot I cannot model a, a problem uh, in this way because the chain have the, their own principle. So, uh, so what? How I can solve this problem? Uh, okay, let's go here. And here, here is the solution. So, from a shared task to split the task. So, instead of considering uh, uh, one task that uh, is shared among uh, among two uh, two employee. I have uh, two entities uh, that represent uh, uh, the part one of a task and the part two of a task. Uh, but the, obviously, this open to other problems, uh, unfortunately. So, uh, first of all, how many parts I I need uh, to to split the task? This, is, this can be a, a challenge. Uh, potentially, this could be a planning variable because potentially uh, I, I should be able to reason, what if I split this task in two? May I, may I optimize better my, uh, my task assignment? Or, and if I switch, uh, if I split the task in three, uh, it could be even better uh, and so on and so forth. So um, th this is a this is a problem, um, and the other problem is how we can uh, keep aligned the, my task. So I have uh, 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 one user that to do, has to do the the first task, then uh, has there is this uh, task part, but uh, I cannot. Th this is a requirement of, of the of the customer share a, uh, share a task has to be uh, accomplished together. So people need to help to each other. They cannot do part of the task in isolation. So they have to start together and, and complete possibly together. Uh, so th this is a, another problem, how to keep aligned to uh, the, the task part. OK, let's see how I solve it, this problem. So first of all, uh, I, I need the simplification. So. Uh, Sometimes it happens that uh, the best is enemy of, of the good. So uh, uh, sometimes following the perfection uh, is more uh, erase more problems than what it solves. So you, you here have it, a trade-off between simplicity of the model and and uh, um, practical reason to make it uh, uh, solvable. So, uh, and this is a, a fair simplification. So it's something that uh, my customer can accept. So basically the, the idea is the following. I, I decide the, 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 the minimum unit of, uh, of the task. In, the, in this case is 30 minutes. So if I have a task that is more than 30 minutes, more than, sorry, more than 60 minutes, uh, this task can be split in two, in a two, in two slices. Uh, each slice of 30 minutes uh, and so on. So if you ha have a, a, a task of 90 minutes, uh, it can be split in three, uh, in three part, in three task of 30 minutes. Okay, and this works fine. So I have uh, 
um, oh, an employee that do all the part uh, in, a, in a row, uh, part one, part two, and part three. Or I can have a, an employee that do part one and part two, and the employee two that do the part three of the task. Uh, and the third option is that uh, I, sp I spread the task among all the employees that are so, well, free employee and they have a uh, free employee that do par a part of this task. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, th there is a, a minor dr drawback here because I can have uh, uh, this odd uh, distribution that is not, uh, it's, uh, not perfect. Uh, you would prefer, for example, instead of having uh, 60 minutes and 30 minutes, uh, you will prefer having 45 and 45 minutes. So this is um, a, a small uh, uh, drawback for the odds. Uh, but um, again, uh, it's uh, a good trade-off. Okay, so, so how to solve, uh, how, so I need to, to write uh, those rules uh, in order to enforce the right topology. So I want that people that uh, uh, when the, the parts of the task are all together, uh, are, uh, sorry, are assigned to a, a specific uh, employee, they are all together. I don't, I don't want fragmentation. I don't want that uh, the, the user do task part one, task part two, then start uh, another task, and then at the end of the task, start again the, the, the last part of the of the previous task. So th this is not uh, uh, not acceptable. Uh, and I need to keep aligned. Another another important rule is to keep aligned the start time of the um, of the part when they are sp spread among multiple users. And this is another another important rule to to implement. Okay, this is the final model. So the final UML model with a plan, uh, planning entity that is uh, the task part. So now it's, uh, it's not anymore task, the, the, the planning entity, but it's the task part. Uh, and I keep a relationship with, uh, with uh, the original task. And so I'm going to assign the task part, not, not, the, ta not the task uh, as a whole. And, um, and that's it, basically. Uh, okay, so let, let's look at the constraint, uh, how I wrote the constraint to, to make it work. So uh, the, the, the most important constraints are, are the following. So I have uh, a two hard constraints, the skill requirements, the high priority task that must be completed on time, uh, the same employee key parts together, so the, the fragmentation rule that I want to avoid, uh, the same employee uh, avoid gaps between uh, parts. Uh, we will talk later uh, of the gaps, but um, okay, um, it's uh, slightly different that uh, keeping part together. Uh, you will understand in, in a few minutes. Uh, the other uh, uh, important rule is um, um, uh, if I have a different employee that uh, do parts of the of, of the same task, I want that uh, the start time of the task. Uh, is the same. Uh, okay, um, and uh, there is even uh, uh, the preference. So if, if it's possible, I prefer to avoid splitting the task because you know there, there is. Uh, it's better if one person do everything instead of uh, spreading uh, too much the, the task. So preferably, um, if I can, I uh, I try to have uh, as much as possible all the part of the, of the task done by one, one person, by a single person. And then I want to minimize then another goal. I want to minimize the number of employee that performs this task, because mm, not because I want to fire someone, but because I prefer to have someone that is free, you know, at least the, 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 this is what my customer asked, uh, have uh, people free so they can uh, assign the, the free person to another store. Um, and priority order. Uh, and so there are tasks that are more important than others. Okay, fine. So let's look at this rule. The, this, is, this is maybe, a, this is the most complex rule that I wrote in my life. So I'm pretty proud of, of it. And uh, I would explain it to you uh, in case it could be useful in, in the next, uh, but even to, to 
to to double check your knowledge of uh, uh, DRL. So this is a DRL rule. It's not a constraint stream uh, rule that you see later with Lukash. Um, uh, so the, this is a, a, an old but good uh, uh, DRL rule. Um, and let's see how it works. So first of all, I, I, obviously here I'm uh, stating a, a set of requirements. So. Uh, there is a, an, a, an assigned task with more than one part. So obviously I want to reason uh, just over the tasks that have more than one part. I don't want to take in consideration tasks that have just one part because they, they, they are not useful in my case. Um, so uh, I create here the list of all the part of uh, uh, of uh, this ta of this uh, task part. So, uh, consider considering all the part that are assigned to the same employee. Let part be the list of task part that belong to the same employee. So, if I look at the solution, uh, a solution, I want to see all the task part uh, that are, are assigned to the same employee. Okay. And then I uh, and then I ask myself, does it exist an isolated task part? What is an isolated task part? So it, an isolated task part is a, a task part that uh, um, has no previous uh, as an uh, um, so basically the previous task part and the, the following task part is not member of parts. I know it's a bit difficult, maybe. Uh, I let obviously you have the slide. You can watch it later and try to think about it. It it, it takes some time to to make it uh, uh, logical. It is at the end, but uh, it's not uh, it's not easy. Uh, so in, if I have this situation, basically, if I have this uh, is, uh, situation with uh, the isolated task part, that is something that I want to avoid. So I'm going to penalize uh, the score. And since um, this solution was built uh, some time ago, the, here the, the method is to add a, a negative number to the soft constraint. But the, the most recent API um, are slightly different. So they, they say penalize the, 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 the soft score, this score. But the, the concept is the same. Okay, another tip, another important tip, uh, when you have a complex uh, well, I would say ever. So every time you have a, uh, a something, that it's a, a good discipline when you create your uh, Opta Planner project, your Opta Planner solution. Uh, uh, do unit test. Unit test is always a good uh, a good discipline. So it's uh, um, having the the unit test of the of the rule for the specific rule is a really uh, really useful. So basically, you create uh, um, in the unit test you create a solution when you expect a, a, a certain result in terms of scoring, and you double check that this uh, uh, th this uh, um, this scoring is uh, is uh, as you expect. Okay, uh, so far so good. Uh, oh, just another requirement. I have another requirement here, I, but I'm almost finished. So, uh, but this is even another interesting requirement. So. Uh, the, the requirement is um, that uh, all employees have a meeting um, at some point in the time, at some point in the uh, in the morning, and they uh, they cannot have a, a, a so they all the tasks have to finish before the meeting, and they cannot split uh, in the um, before and and after the meeting. Uh, so th this is the what I expect. So I expect that this gap here. Uh, is uh, all the part of the uh, of uh, of the task are before the gap, um, and all the tasks complete before the start of uh, of the meeting. So the first possible solution that uh, can come in mind: let's create a, a special task, uh, a special task that is that we call gap. And let's enforce uh, uh, the fact that the gap uh, has to start at the same time altogether. So uh, this is a bad idea uh, because it's uh, impossible to start 
um, the gap uh, to ensure that all the gaps start at the same time. Why this? Because the, the tasks have different uh, length. So it's really unlikely that you can have uh, um, a, a set of tasks in, in a row that finish exactly at the same time. Uh, so to come back to the pitch, to the previous picture, so what you want is here having this space and this space in the middle. So how to achieve this? Uh, so we have to uh, so we have to tweak the definition of the start time. So um, uh, you, you have to see, you have to basically to to see that the start time is um, a, a shadow variable. Uh, so something that is computed. Uh, is computed based on the on the uh, on the task part that are on the queue. Uh, so what you can do, you can do a trick inside this computation. Uh, inside this computation, you just say, okay, if uh, if I have um, um, if my task starts uh, after uh, let's uh, here in the in the gap time. I'm going to move the start time at the end of the gap. Okay, this is the trick. Um, again, it requires a bit to, to think about it, but uh, the, at the end you have the code. I, I will share with you the code so you can you can look at the solution. Okay, so basically wh when you compute the start time of the, you, you do basically this uh, algorithm. You loop uh, uh, across all the the, the chain or the uh, all the uh, ring of the chain, uh, following the next task part the relationship. Uh, and usually, what you do is the start time of uh, of, a ta of the task is uh, equal to the end time of the previous task, except the case that you are in the overlap, and in this case you move uh, the start time after uh, the gap. OK? OK, and that's it. So it works. Um, it was uh, a pretty nice uh, POC, uh, worked pretty well. And uh, I'm uh, really happy and proud of it. Uh, hope that you enjoyed the, the presentation. So uh, thank you.